Hallelujah. God, we thank you for another day. You kept us, God. You've allowed your mercy and your grace to tag us all week long and bring us to the house of worship one more time. And for that, we say, thank you, God. Now, God, as we assemble, don't let us assemble just to assemble. Let us experience you, God, in a new and a fresh way, God. Let your presence be made known in this house on this day. We're expecting, we're anticipating great things. And the people of God agree by saying amen. Amen. I'm expecting great things. Mm-hmm. You ready, Brandon? I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. them to expect great things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God is good. Yeah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. It's a simple worship. 
that says, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Yes. Thank you, God. Woo. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me. Help me say, you are good. expecting great things because of last week Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Woo! Did we not worship in spirit and in truth? Yes. We need to bring that back in today as we worship in spirit and in truth. So good morning to the body of Christ. We welcome our Facebook worshipers and our YouTube worshipers to the Mount Calvary AME Church in Towson, Maryland, where our fine pastor is Reverend Bobby B. Cox, Jr. Amen. Who took us to another level last Sunday. And we're looking for even greater on this Sunday morning. Let us start first with our opening hymn, which is How to Reach the masses, the masses all over the world. How to reach the masses, those of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I, if you be lifted up, we will draw all men unto me. How to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer. Thank you. 
the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust me, and do not doubt the word. Amen. We will now have our invocation by Sister Sherry Johnson, followed by the prayer response, and then the scripture by Reverend Muriel Lucas, and a selection from this wonderful youth ministry choir. Give them a hand. Amen. Amen. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Let us pray. Most wise and eternal Father, we come today to say thank you. Father, we thank you first for waking us up this morning. Then, Lord God, we thank you that you've allowed us to come out to this place of worship. Father, we thank you for keeping it for us, Lord God. We thank you for making it a safe haven for us, dear Lord. Father God, as we come today, Lord, we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord God, we invite your presence into this place, Lord God. For we can't do anything without you, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord God, we pray that any, any hindering spirits would be removed, Lord God, that we are free to worship, Lord God, free to lift up the name of Jesus, free to praise you on this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. So you are welcome in this place. Oh, Father God, we pray that our ears would be open to hear the word, that our eyes would be open, that we would see you high and lifted up. Father God, we pray, dear Lord, for the man of the hour, your chief servant leader, Lord God, that you would just bless him, Lord God, that you would use him in a mighty way, Lord God, to declare your word, Lord God. 
And Father God, we pray for everyone that's gathered in this sanctuary, Lord God, that they will be able, Lord God, to lift up their voices in praise, O oh, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we invite you. We welcome you, Lord God. We need you on today, Lord God, to be in this place. Fill this sanctuary, Lord God. Be in it, Lord God. We're quiet right now, Lord God, but I'm invoking the presence of the Holy Ghost that it would take full control on today, Lord God. Lord God, whatever it is that we need, send it on down, Lord God, because we need you, Lord God. We don't need any rocks to cry out for us on today, Lord God. Father God, it's Sunday morning, and you gave us this day, Lord God, that we would set aside to worship you. And Lord God, we come, Lord God, in spirit and in truth. Father God, we pray, Lord God, for those that are watching with us, Lord God. Lord God, that they wouldn't be just observers, that they would participate. Father God, get in us, Lord God. Move and have your way. Have your way, Lord. Bless all of the voices that are lifted up to Zion, Lord God. Bless the ushers that they stand on the doorpost, oh, Heavenly Father. Welcoming your people in. Lord God, for these and all other blessings, we pray and our souls say amen. Morning. Praise the Lord. It is so good <laughs> to open his word. And this morning, if you can rest on your feet, we will be reading from the book of John. That's in the New Testament. And it's the book of John. The first chapter. And the very first verse. And, well, I was raised in church. And we all know this. In the what? In the beginning. In the beginning. There was the Word. Oh. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
This is the word of the Lord. Be blessed. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, all oh, my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy, his holy name. Amen. We lift your name on high. This morning, we're indeed to have our guests to come and to share with us in our worship experience here at Mount Calvary. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please stand and remain standing that we may be able to uh, greet you this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, we, we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we welcome you here uh, to Mount Calvary Church, and we are glad that you have come to celebrate the Lord with us on this Lord's Day, and we invite you to come again to injury and uh, visit with us and share with us in our worship experience real soon. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us continue, my brothers and my sisters, to uh, keep all of our sick and our shut in, our bereaved, lifted up in our prayers. Uh, but we certainly believe that prayer changes things. We believe that there's power in prayer. So we ask that you, those of you who know the word of prayer continue to pray uh, for the sick and the shut in, the bereaved, and others who may need our prayers. Uh, next month, next month, just a few days from now, next month, May is Women's Month. May is Women's Month. We celebrate uh, women here at Mount Calvary Church in the month of May. And uh, on the uh, second Saturday, Saturday before uh, Mother's Day, uh, the WOW Ministry, the Women of Warfare, will have a banquet uh, beginning at 5 p.m. Uh, if you have not received your tickets, uh, purchase your ticket, then you need to do so. You need to do so as soon as possible. Uh, tickets are going, tickets are gone, tickets are gone. And when they are gone, they are gone. Amen. Amen. So if you have not uh, purchased your ticket, please uh, do so. Please do so. See, uh, Sister Patricia, any uh, a member of the WOW ministry, they will be happy to assist you with a ticket. Uh, beginning on tomorrow evening at 6.30, uh, our small group meeting, uh, from the cross to Pentecost, from the cross to Pentecost. Uh, if you are interested in being a part of that experience, a part of uh, that small group study uh, from the cross to Pentecost, please uh, see, uh, contact Reverend Don. Amen. Amen. As many of you know that uh, uh, this has been a very interesting year uh, for Mount Calvary Church uh, in many ways. Uh, one of the ways that it has been interesting is that uh, I say that God has a sense of humor, and uh, he has a sense of humor, and, and he has a way of trying our faith, of trying our faith. Uh, this year, all years, was a year uh, that we had to refinance uh, the Family Life Center mortgage, amen? And uh, this year, uh, all years, that uh, we thought our payment would come down because of the fact uh, that uh, we were refinancing, but because of the economy, yeah, uh, the, the interest rate went up, therefore it caused our uh, monthly uh, payment to go up, to go up, and uh, so we, we, we need your help. We need your help uh, in, 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 in helping us pay off this mortgage because uh, we don't want to uh, get caught like this again uh, in another five years. Amen, amen. And so uh, the steward board and, uh, has uh, come up with a plan, and, and it's been endorsed by the church conference. And, and we just wanted to share it with you uh, on today, and we just want you to know that, that you, can, you can give today. You, you can give today. You don't have to wait until the third Sunday in May to start giving, but you can give on today. Uh, uh, our uh, chairperson of that committee, uh, Sister Jerry is here this morning, and she's going to share uh, some information with us as it relates to uh, our new campaign to pay off the mortgage here at Mount Calvary. Amen. Okay, good morning. Again, 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 again. We claim the victory. And today, third Sunday, is Mortgage Emphasis Sunday. It's emphasis to give us a focus on we know what God can do, but it also is an emphasis to let you know just where your church is about that big, huge mortgage. What's been going on, what's, what's happening, and what's doing, and what we need you to do. We need you to keep on praying. We need you to keep on giving. But specifically, we need to let you know. So we collected in the month of March $6,957.70 towards the mortgage. But, but guess what? 
our mortgage in March was $17,139 in one cent. That's $10,181.31 difference. And we need 100 people to give $175 a month to cover that mortgage. 100 of us to give will cover that mortgage. Now we paid the mortgage, praise God, we paid the mortgage. Your tithes and offerings, but we give, we're paying Paul. We got all kinds of bills that we have to pay. And that is the reality. And so not every Sunday will I stand before you and tell you such details. We got so much to praise God for. But on this third, third Sunday, it was, it was necessary to let you know just what we need, just what we need. We need prayer, but we also need giving. And so I, I, I ask that you give up and beyond your tithes and offerings, up and beyond, because we use your tithes and offerings to pay the difference, but we need up and beyond to meet the mortgage. So third Sundays of each month, I'm going to give you a little bit of details, and I'm going to show you how successful we are and how we're believing in God and how we're getting doing it better and better and better. So $175 of hundred of us can make it happen. And there are 175 of friends and family of Mount Calvary. And so praise God. We can do it with God's help. Bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is going to allow us to do it. Amen. Because the Lord is indeed uh, stretching our faith. He's not only trying our faith, but he's stretching our faith. And I just believe that God is going to uh, work, uh, work through us to allow us to stretch our faith. And when we stretch our faith, our faith will grow. Amen. Amen. It's given time. It's given time. It's given time for the body of Christ. And what a blessing it is just to be able to give, just to be able to give, just to be able to give. What a blessing it is. Uh, this morning, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And I should be happy to give you an envelope. If by chance you want to use your electronic device, uh, then please know that uh, you can find us on Cash App, uh, dollar sign M-C-A-M-E-C, -E dollar sign M-C-A-M-E-C. -E you can also find us on Giveify, and you can also uh, find us uh, on our website, Mount Calvary, MT, Mount Calvary, AME .org. Go to the uh, Give tab, and you can give in that manner as well. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, prepare now to give as the Lord has blessed us to give as we stand all over the church.
all things come to thee, O Lord. Everything has been done in decency and in order. So therefore, the final worship experience will be from the word of God, from the man of God. Amen. Amen. Last week, resurrection, we will now have our altar call by Sister Patricia Joyner. But first, just let me introduce our pastor. And one thing I want to say is last week was a Holy Ghost resurrection revelation. <laughs> pastor Bob preached from John 20, 1 through 10. It is dark right now. But he let us know that God disrupts the darkness, that God delivers us, us from the dark, darkness, and God is a divine, provides a divine resurrection, a resurgence because of the resurrection. So we're looking forward to another word from our pastor. And one thing we know for sure, that our pastor will preach if you will pray. So don't get too comfortable because you have a responsibility because we know that the word will come forth with power and authority and even to the point that someone might say, what should I do? What must I do to be saved? So after the altar call and a wonderful selection by this youth ministry choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of our own pastor, Reverend Dr. Reverend Dr. <laughs> Bobby B. Cox Jr. I almost said that earlier this morning. So that is insight into what's coming. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. As I look around the sanctuary, especially in the choir loft, I recognize that we are blessed. We are truly, truly blessed. Hallelujah. And on today, I want to ask that um, even if the children can just come to the altar, because as we're listening to the news, okay, when I hear the news of a mother getting arrested because her six-year-old child shot a teacher, we are going through a lot. So imagine the magnitude of what our children are going through. What they're going through in the school system. What they're up against each and every day. So on this day, on this day, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus said, and let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for my soul. For now the altar is open. So will you come? Will you come? And if not, if you don't come to the altar, please stand all over the house. Stand in proxy for a child. Stand in proxy for a mother. Stand in proxy for a teacher. There's gun violence running rampant. And we don't know what we're going to face when we walk out the doors of Mount Calvary. So I'm going to ask if you will come. Come.
We're standing in need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. We all need prayer. Let us bow, agreeing in prayer, believing that anything we ask in Jesus' name, it shall be granted. God, we come boldly before your throne. We come humbly bowing before a holy God who knows all and who can deliver us all. God, we stand on this is holy ground on today. This is holy ground on today. In your temple called Mount Calvary, God, you said in your word, all we have to do is ask. So God, I come asking right now in the name of Jesus. First, thanking you, God, for being a just God. Thanking you, God, for being a holy God. Thanking you, God, for being loving and kind and compassionate, Lord God. For keeping us, God, in the name of Jesus. We see the children here in Mount Calvary, and we are blessed. That's the next generation, God. So we are doomed, we are due to pray for our children, Lord God. You said in Deuteronomy, we, to, we are to pray, hallelujah, when we're riding in our cars, God, when we're in our homes, God, when we're walking in the grocery store, wherever we're at, Lord God, we are to pray and teach our children, Lord God, Teach our children, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And so right now, we're just praying, Lord God, that you will cover them in the name of Jesus, God. Sweep through this sanctuary right now in the name of Jesus, God. Cover our children from the ground of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. Touch their minds right now in the name of Jesus, God. Let them think on those things that are of a good report, Lord God. Those things that are true, Lord God. Those things that are praiseworthy, Lord God. If it be of any virtue, Lord God, help them to think on those things right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. When they're sitting in their classroom, Lord God, when they're being bullied, Lord God, whatever they're going through, Lord God, when the teacher don't deem them worry, Lord, wor worthy, Lord God, allow them to know that they are worthy, Lord God, that they are the head and not the tail, Lord God, that they are above and not beneath, Lord God, that they are more than a conqueror, Lord God, that before, and before they were formed in their mother's womb, Lord God, you knew them, Lord God. You purposed for them, Lord God. You set a plan for them, Lord God. And we bind the spirit of gun violence, Lord God. We bind the spirit of shooting in schools, God. We bind the spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that's coming to penetrate and harm our children, Lord God. Trafficking, we bind them, Lord God. Violence, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus, God. Each and every one of them are deemed holy before a holy God, Lord God. God, and touch the parents. Touch us as the family of Mount Calvary, God. Help us to stand in the gap for the children right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to call out their name in the name of Jesus. When we see them coming to the door, God, help, them, help us to say, God, touch right now in the name of Jesus, God. Keep them safe, God. Protect them right now, Lord God. It's up to us as an adult, Lord God, to sow into the children right now in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, have your way right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Have your way right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, you said, suffer little children that come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you've already done, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you for their future. The future doctors, the future lawyers, the future judges, the future preachers, God. The future teachers, God, in the name of Jesus, God. 
Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bind oppression. We bind every suicidal thought in the name of Jesus. We bind every insecurity, Lord God. And we lose joy overflowing, God. We lose hope for tomorrow, Lord God. We lose victory over their lives in the name of Jesus, God. And we declare it so. Touch the minister right now. Touch our pastor and touch the minister of the youth, Lord God. And touch anyone, God, that has anything to do with the youth. Touch them. Help them to sow seeds of positivity into their lives. In Christ's name we pray. And we count it done. And as we walk from the altar, let's walk in victory saying it is done. My child is blessed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray amen, amen, and amen. Give me the victory. I love him. I love him. I really love God. about the days that we are living in. When a six-year-old, a six-year-old will take a gun to school. These are the days, y'all, we need to look to God because there's no God like him. If we just cry out to him, there's no God like him. Will you give Miss Pack a hand as she leads this Come song? On, there's no God like Jeff. Declaring the word of the Lord. Yes, sing, Maddie. And these are the days of his servant Moses. Righteousness be restored. Yes, 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 yes. These are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sorrow. Yeah, yeah. Still, we are the voice in the desert. Crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, hear up the police, out of Zion's peace, salvation. days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh, and these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are all white in the world. The laborers that are in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the longest. 
voice. No God like Jehovah. Is there a witness in the house today? There is no God like Jehovah. You can search for and wide, high and low, but you'll never find a God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Uh, there'll be somebody in the house tonight, uh, today, who can testify Hallelujah. that there is no God. No God. Thank you, God. Like Jehovah. God, our Father, we do come before your presence once again today. Thank you, God, for the many blessings that you have already bestowed upon us. But God, we do realize, know, and understand that we live, move, and have our being because of Jesus, who is still the Christ. Now, God, we do pray that you will Continue to manifest yourself in this house today. God, we ask now that you continue to guide our hearts and our minds. We pray, God, that you open us up, that we may be receptive of your word today. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer, in the people God said, amen. Amen. This morning, I want to call your attention to that passage scripture that was read earlier in your hearing. And that's the gospel, John chapter 1 and verse 1. Would that you uh, read verses 1 through 29. Uh, but I want to lift verse 1 today as we make our way 
through verses 2 through 29. The first verse of John chapter 1 simply says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For a few minutes this morning, I want to simply tag this text for preaching. Do you know who he is? 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 Uh, beloved, on last Sunday, we celebrated Resurrection Day. And Resurrection Day is no ordinary day. I know you know that because you bought a new outfit for Resurrection Day. You invited your family and your friends to church you had reservation for brunch. So Resurrection Day is no ordinary day. But now that it is over, now that it is one week later, are you saying like Peter said in John chapter 21, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to normal. If you know who he is, Chapter 1 of John, then you won't have to have the need or the urge to go back to the normal in chapter 21 of John. If you know who he is in chapter 1 of John, then you won't have the need or the urge to go back to the normal in chapter 21 of John. Chapter 1 is before the resurrection. And chapter 21 is after the resurrection. Chapter 21 won't make sense until you know who he is in chapter 1. <laughs> chapter 1 and verse 1 of John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It must be noted that any lover of the Bible, any lover of the Gospels, understand that every Gospel was written from a certain perspective, from a certain vantage point. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all point to Jesus, but they have different perspectives that they are trying to address or that they are trying to live. In, the, in, in, in Matthew's gospel, Matthew lifts the heritage of Jesus. He gives the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, Matthew's gospel goes back through Jesus' roots, through his lineage, uh, through David and Abraham, tying him to his Jewish heritage. And that's important because he comes as the king of, of kings. David was a king and a great king, but here comes Jesus, who is the king of kings. Uh, Matthew goes back to Abraham because there were some covenants that God gave to Abraham, and Jesus fulfilled some of those covenants that was given back in the book of Genesis. So Matthew talks about the heritage of of Jesus. Moreover, Matthew's gospel has a liberating theme because in the Old Testament, uh, it was an evil Pharaoh trying to kill all the baby boys when Moses was born. When Jesus was born, uh, when Jesus showed up on the scene, there was another evil man named Herod who was trying to kill all the baby boys, and Jesus represented this liberation not just out of Egypt, but out of sin and damnation. So Matthew ties us to the heritage of Jesus. In Mark's gospel, Mark lifts the humanity of Jesus. Uh, Mark uh, skips over any kind of birth, any kind of immaculate conception, and he jumps us into the ministry of Jesus. Jesus gets baptized and starts healing 
Uh, Jesus starts delivering. Jesus starts opening doors. Jesus starts making ways out of no ways. Uh, Mark is focused on the humanity of Jesus. Uh, there's not a lot about Jesus' birth or, or even what it does after the resurrection because Mark is lifting for us that Jesus can feel what we feel. Uh, that Jesus knows what we know and that uh, he has been where we have been. Uh, that's good news just to know that you have a Jesus who knows all about it. Uh, you have a Jesus who has been rejected in the flesh, abandoned in the flesh, who knows what it is to be hungry, who knows what it is to be Denied to know who knows what it is to be betrayed. So, so Mark lists for us the humanity of Jesus. In Luke's gospel, Luke lifts the inclusivity of Jesus. Uh, Matthew wants us to know that Jesus came for the Jews, but uh, like Luke, he wants us to know that Jesus uh, just didn't come for the Jews, but he came for the Gentiles also. I mean, everybody in here, if you are not a Jew, you are a Gentile. And he came just for you. In Luke, we see that Jesus hangs out with people who have been kicked to the side. People who are on the margin. People who are disinherited. People who have been dismissed and disrespected. Jesus hangs out with women and lepers. And, and he hangs out with the least, the lost, the last, and the left out. Is there anybody here glad that you made it into the family of God? Uh, <laughs> Beloved, Jesus just didn't come for those of us who are rich, but he came for those of us who are struggling. He just didn't come for those of us who have PhDs, but he came for those of us who have no D. He just didn't come for those of us who drive Mercedes and BMWs, but he came to see about those of us who drive Pintos uh, and who drive Hoopties. Uh, uh, Jesus came for everybody. It doesn't matter uh, what side of town you live on, east side, west side, north side, south side. Jesus is inclusive. In John's gospel, John is a little different. John has a different swag. John takes a different vantage point. Uh, Matthew lifts the heritage of Jesus. Uh, Mark lifts the humanity of Jesus. Luke lifts the inclusivity of Jesus. But John lifts the divinity of Jesus. Yeah, John skips over Mary, a barn, Joseph, and Bethlehem. John said, if you really want to understand Jesus, if you really want to know who he is, forget the barn, forget Joseph, forget Mary, forget the womb, forget the pregnancy, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, I wish I had some help in here today, and the Word was God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John starts copying off of Genesis. Uh, John says, if you want to know about Jesus, you got to go to the beginning because it was in the beginning before, because Jesus, Jesus was in the beginning before be the beginning began. And when the end ends, he will already be there waiting on us to catch up with him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. He is the greatest Alpha. He is the greatest Omega. In the beginning was the Word. Uh, what John is trying to say to us through Jesus is that when Jesus showed up, uh, a God showed up in the flesh. So when you look at Jesus, you are looking at God. For Jesus is majestic in his manhood. Jesus is is the Father adorned in flesh. Jesus is sovereignty wrapped in skin. Jesus is forever stuck in the right now. Jesus is a king disguised as a kid. Jesus is deity with DNA. Jesus is uh, eternity on earth. Jesus is God. And because uh, he is God, he, uh, Jesus has God's power. Uh, 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 that's why when Jesus showed up, 
in the flesh, everything shifted. Uh, the, there was a dispensation of, of grace and love. That, uh, uh, and that's why you can be jacked up and tore up. But, but Jesus has power to cover you, power to save you, power to redeem you. Anybody here been covered by Jesus? Uh, do you know who he is? Jesus is such a man of mystery. He is so earthly and so heavenly, so human yet so divine, so present yet so beyond, so accessible but yet so incomprehensible. Walter Brueggemann, the Old Testament scholar, said Jesus was a deep disruption wherever he went. He was a misfit. He didn't fit into anybody's category, and wherever uh, he went, and, and whenever he entered into a room, everything changed because Jesus causes a shift. He causes a shift, and 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 and, and, and he's God's representative. God knew that we could not become like him, so he decided to become like us and that's what that 14th verse of first john says and he became flesh and, and and dwelt among us he was fully divine and fully human fully god and fully man he could touch the sky and at the same time stand on the soil do you do you really know who he is? As, as human, he was born in a manger, but as God, angels sang at his birth. As, as humans, he had nowhere to lay his head, but as God, he said, in my father's house are many mentioned. As, as a human, he said, I thirst, but as God, he said, I am the living water. As a human, he said, I'm, I'm hungry. But as God, he said, I am the bread of life. As a human, he walked through a door. But as God, he said, I am the door. As a human, he rested in the mountain. But as God, he said, come unto me, all ye that heaven laden, and I will give you rest. As human, he asked if, if this cup can pass from me. But as God, he said, nevertheless, as a human, he died one Friday afternoon. But as God, he got up on Sunday morning. Do you know who he is? Do you know? Do you know who he is? Well, if by chance you don't know him, let me tell you what John said about him. And 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 and, and, and I declare it would give you a, a, a summary of the of of, of 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 the New Testament. John said, uh, "Jesus is the Logos." Ah. Uh, verse one: In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was. God. Now that's the English version, but if you read in the Greek, it says in the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was God and the Logos was God. Logos means the logic of God. The order of God. The divine wisdom of God that is identified in the second person of the Trinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, when God showed up in the world through Jesus, he was order coming into disorder. He was the logic of eternity coming into the illogical all on the earth. He, he was reason coming to the unreasonable. He was sensible coming into the unsensible. He was the rational coming to the un irrational. He was the logic of God. And, and wherever Jesus went, he kept putting stuff back in order. Oh, that's shouting stuff right there. I declare you don't know when they shout. He he was the logic of God. 
And wherever Jesus went, he kept putting stuff back in order. Oh, you ain't shouting yet. That, that means the logos came into the cosmos just to solve your chaos. Yet Jesus stepped into the world to help you deal with stuff that you don't have the power or the sense to deal with. That's why every, everywhere Jesus went, he put stuff back in order. You can read it in John for yourself. You, you, you can see him putting stuff back in order because when you jump out of chapter 2, you jump into chapter, when you jump out of chapter 1 you ju and, and jump into chapter 2, uh, there's a wedding feast that's going on in Cana the Galilee and, 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 and they ran out of wine. And it took a bottle of DeSante. And turned it into red wine. He turned some water into wine. And in chapter 3, he got somebody in order uh, by the name of Nicodemus because Nicodemus was wondering, how can I be born again when I'm old? And Jesus said unto him, uh, you got to be born of the Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God, that's theological. So love the world, that's cosmological. Uh, that he gave his only begotten, begotten son, that's Christological. That whosoever believeth in him, that's soteriology. That he shall have everlasting life, that eschatological. You ought to be glad that the theological sent the Christological to give you soteriology so that you could have eschatological. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. Ah, you keep on reading, you keep on reading it, John. You will discover that in chapter 4, he met a woman at a well, and, 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 and Jesus said to her that, that you look for water, but, but you should be asked me uh, because I got exactly what you need. In chapter 5, he saw a man at the pool of Bethesda who has been lying there for 38 years. He asked him, if you want to get better, and, and my brothers and sisters, if you want to get better, uh, he can give you the uh, prescription for your perplexity. In chapter 6, he took two fish, five loaves of bread, fed 5,000 men. In chapter 7, he taught in the temple. In chapter 8, a woman was caught in the very act of adultery and some men who called her brother to him and said, now Lord, what shall we do? He didn't do anything but just stoop down and began to write in the ground. And to this day, nobody know what the Jesus wrote on the ground, but it turned those brothers around. He came to get stuff in order. In chapter 9, he healed a blind man who was, who was born blind. In chapter 10, he met some trifling Pharisees. In chapter 11, he raised Lazarus from the dead. I declare he knows how to set stuff in order. Anybody glad that the Lord can set stuff in order? Uh, don't fool me now. Uh, some of you know that he would do it because your stuff uh, used to be out of order. Until Jesus came in your life and put some stuff back in order. And can't nobody put it in order like Jesus can put it in order. He knows how to get to you. He knows how to heal you. He knows how to help you. Because Jesus is the Lord. Yeah, he's the, he's the Lord God. He came to put stuff in order. The second thing we can pull from this John pericope is that Jesus is the life. Yeah, he, 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 here it is in verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of humanity. I, 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 I used this verse, I know I did, I used it last week because I talked about dark. And, and I talked about Jesus being the light of men. And, and, and you remember that? That you can't out dark God's light? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but, 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 but today I want to look at that life part. That in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Uh, uh, when you look at Jesus, you are looking at life. That's why the tomb got frustrated when Jesus was put in it. Because a tomb is for dead people. But even as a dead man, he's still the resurrection and the life. So when you meet Jesus, you're meeting life. Now, in Greek, there are two words for life. One is bios, and the other one is zoe. Bios is where we get the word biography, from which means the story of one's life. We also get the word biology, which is the study of life. Bios speaks to things pertaining to life. But that is not the, the word used in the text. The Greek word for life that is used in the text is zoe. Zoe simply means this. It has nothing to do with the things of life, but it deals with the quality of life. When you meet Jesus, he changes the quality of your life. And that's another shout y'all miss. When you meet Jesus, he changes the quality of your life. That's why John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes except to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have and have it more. Oh, somebody read the Bible. Hey, when Jesus gives life, he gives you a quality of life. In other words, he gives you an upgrade. Ah, oh, you think you something now, but when Jesus comes into your life, he gives your life an upgrade, which simply means he, he improves the quality of your life. He makes the quality of your life better. Ah, he gives you upgrade. Ah, nothing is wrong with it with an iPhone 10, but an iPhone 14 is an upgrade. Nothing is wrong with flying basic, but the first class is an upgrade. Jesus showed up to give you an upgrade. Yeah, when Jesus grips your life, he, he upgrades your life. And, and, and people you used to give all your energy to, yeah, you don't have energy for them anymore because I declare that you're living your best life. Uh, uh, Jesus comes unto your life. Uh, he gives you a quality of life. He, he upgrades your life uh, because he doesn't just want you to exist, but he wants you to live. Uh, uh, that's why when he found you, when he found your thirst, he quenched it. Uh, when he found your hunger, he satisfied it. When he found your shame, he removed it. He, he found your loss and retrieved it. He found he found your debt and paid it. He found your weakness and strengthened it. He found your emptiness and filled it. He found your burden and lifted it. He found your sickness and cured it. He found your soul and redeemed it. He found your guilt and put his blood on it. He can give you life. In fact, he can pull you back to life because Jesus is Ah, Jesus is life. The third and final thing, do you know who he is? He is Logos. Do you know who he is? He is the life. The last thing is that Jesus is the lamb. Verse 29 says, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him. And he said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. He will take your sins away. He will take your disappointments away. He will take your embarrassments away. He will take your guilt away. And he will cast them all in the sea of forgiveness. 
and I declare that when it takes them away, you won't look like what you've been through because he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. Uh, and anybody here knows the lamb. Uh, uh, do you know him for yourself? Uh, uh, he was born in Bethlehem. Uh, he was reared by a teenage mother. Uh, he was protected by his stepdaddy. Uh, he was raised in Nazareth. Uh, he was baptized in the Jordan. Uh, uh, do you know who he is? Uh, he fasted in the wilderness. Uh, uh, he was tempted by the devil. He preached in Capernaum. He healed in Galilee. He taught in Samaria. He walked out on the water. Do you know who he is? He died one Friday on a hill called Calvary. Yes, they stretched the lamb high and they stretched him wide. Man, because of the, he is the lamb of God. Uh, we can sing with the poet uh, uh, what can wash away my sins uh, uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, uh, what can make me whole again uh, uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, uh, because he is the lamb uh, uh, somebody else said where well, the blood uh, uh, had to come from somewhere uh, and he that point to a pen and paper in hand uh, and began to write there is a fountain uh, filled with blood uh, uh, drawn from Emmanuel's vein uh, and sinners plunge beneath that flood uh, lose all their guilt and stain uh, because he is the lamb uh, uh, we can say with the artist uh, I am redeemed uh, uh, bought with a price uh, Jesus has changed uh, uh, my whole life uh, if anybody asks you uh, just who I am uh, tell them uh, that I am redeemed. Uh, uh, do you know who he is? Uh, uh, he's my ladder to high mountains. Uh, uh, he's my bridge over troubled waters. Uh, uh, he's my Google for my questions. Uh, uh, he's my joy and my sorrow. Uh, uh, he's my hope for tomorrow. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, uh, he's my way maker. Uh, uh, he's my miracle worker. Uh, uh, he's my promise keeper. Uh, he's my light in darkness. Uh, uh, do you know who he is? Uh, uh, he's my heaven old sharer. Uh, uh, he's my, uh, my bill payer. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, uh, he is uh, uh, my all in all. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, uh, he's the rose of Sharon. Uh, uh, he's the lily of the valley. Uh, he's Ezekiel's wheel. Uh, uh, he's Daniel Stone. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm glad uh, uh, that I know who he is uh, because he woke me up uh, uh, early this morning. Uh, didn't have to do it, uh, uh, but he did. Uh, uh, do you know who he is? Uh, he's the one uh, that keeps making ways uh, out of no ways for me. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, he's the one uh, that picks me up uh, and brushes me off uh, uh, every time I fall down. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, he's the one uh, that forgives my sins. Uh, day in and day out. Uh, have you tried him? Uh, do you know him for yourself? Uh, say yes! Uh, say yes! Uh, say yes! Uh, I'm glad uh, I know him uh, for myself. Uh, and because I know him, uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Uh, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord because he's my friend. Oh, yes, he is. Have you tried it for yourself? Ain't it all right? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Yes! Do you 
know. He is. Do you know who he is? Resurrection day will not make sense to you. Other than it's a day to get a new outfit. Show up at church to show off your new outfit. And to go to brunch. That's all it would mean to you. But when you know who he is, then you know that 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 every Sunday, as we know in Christendom, every Sunday is a little resurrection Sunday. Because every Sunday reminds us that that no matter what hell we go through on Friday. On Sunday is Resurrection Day. We may stay, we may stay in the grave all Friday. We may stay in the doghouse all night, Saturday night. But we know that early Sunday morning is Resurrection Day. Oh, bless His holy name. So this one week later. I just stopped by to ask, after such a grand celebration on last Sunday, do you really know who he is? That's all I want to know one week later. Do you really, do you know, do you really know who he is? Do you know him as Savior of your soul? Do you, do you know him as Savior? If you do not know him as Savior, Today is a good day to get saved. If you are unsure of your salvation, today is a good day to get it, get it fixed and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved. If by chance that you need a church home, I declare I would love to be your pastor. The members of Mob Calvary will love on you, help you grow. Well, bless the Lord to become everything that God has created you to be. If by chance today that you just need to reconnect with God, reconnect with church, the door is open. You can come just as you are. Jesus, the light of the door is open. We will walk in the light. You keep the light. Come where? Come where did you just come? Shine on. Oh, the door is open.
from whom all blessings flow. We have Jacqueline Whittington, my cousin and Pam's sister, has come to be united with the Mount Calvary family. Amen. When she stood up, I said she's standing up as a guest, but she's not really a guest because she's been coming. So we praise God for her obedience to the move of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Jackie. God bless you again. Welcome, my sister. God bless you, and how grateful we are to have you to come and to unite with the Mount Calvary, Amy Church family. How blessed a God we are. How blessed a God we are. And there, there's plenty of room in my Father's kingdom for work to be done. So we want you to come and be a part of us and, and become involved in the ministry of the church. Amen. God bless you. Come on, Mount Calvary. Just give our new a hand. Amen. God just keep on blessing us day by day. Amen. He keeps on blessing us day by day. And each week he's adding to the fold. Each week he's adding to the fold. We praise God for that. Amen. 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 Now, it's been a good day. It's been a great day. It's been a mighty, mighty good day. We praise God for it. We praise God for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. To keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceedingly joy. May his spirit, may his love, may his peace abide with us today, tomorrow, and forever. And the people God said to him.
for engaging in the ministry of giving. You can go to our website and click the Give tab. You can call the church office and give your gift with your debit or credit card. You can mail your gift to the church. You can bring your gift to the church during office hours, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4 p.m. You can give through Cash App on your smart device. Thank you for joining our virtual worship experience and may God continue to bless and keep you. Until the next Lord's Day, be well and be safe.